Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. Today we have the Mouseketeers go to Disney World? Yeah, the Mouseketeers at Walt Disney World. Yeah! I'm just, so you don't have to scrub through this to find out what I thought. I need you to go just watch it right now. Just right now. Um, <laughs> whether you're going to love it or hate it, you need to watch it right now. Especially if you were alive in the 1970s. If you weren't, well, that's fine, but you'll get an idea of what 70s television programming was like, along with commercials. Yes, this is one of those weird things. I don't know. I think I've heard other people talk about commercials being included in some of these things. Maybe it's just this thing. Maybe it's other things. But for all I know, this Wonderful World of Disney episode uh, might be the only thing that includes commercials from the 1970s in this episode. So, yes, you might think, oh, I don't want to sit through 56 minutes of uh, from 1977, by the way. This came out November 20th, 1977. Um, you may not like want to go, well, that stinks. They had commercials included in this Disney Plus thing. It's advertising Coke and dog food and God knows what else. I don't want to sit through commercials. No, you do. Because these commercials are from the 70s. They're kind of freaking awesome uh, because they don't make commercials like this anymore. There's your selling point. Whether you care about the Mouseketeers or not, or the Disco Mice, as these uh, are called, they are called, uh, I think, uh, from my research. <laughs> um, watch this for the commercials. The episode itself is not really funny or well acted or anything else in any way good um it's silly it's goofy it's cute but it's the commercials that maybe go what i need to there's no way i'm stopping there's no way even if i did do that kind of thing there's no way i put pause hit pause and go no i'm not gonna watch any more of this i don't do that but the commercials made me keep going um all right, I'm going to calm, calm down. Just so you know, this is treated, this is pretty much a propaganda film for Walt Disney World. It's like, hey, here's some kids who happen to be Mouseketeers, and they have no parents except for Mr. Brown, played by Ronnie Shell. You might know him from, uh, he's, he's a, a face you'd recognize from the 60s and 70s, uh, in a, just a ton of things. He's also done a a lot of uh, voice acting work, including Jason from Battle of the Planets. There's an anime connection to this, which I did not expect, but Battle of the Planets, he's the voice of Jason. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, well, okay, it doesn't matter, but still, that's pretty impressive to me. I had no idea. It's kind of great. There's so many things I discovered about this, this in through this show. All right. It's an episode of The Wonderful World of Disney. It's 56 minutes long. 1977 stars Joanne Worley as a reporter from the Everglades magazine, which is impressive to some people, apparently, in this show. They're in Florida, so... But she plays a reporter who's looking to get some dirt on the Mouseketeers on a bunch of 12-year-olds. What? <laughs> Why? Okay, Mr. Brown, he's the guy, he's Ronnie Shell. He is, oh, by, by the way, Joanne Worley, you know that, if you know that name, you know her from Laugh-In, and, uh, 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 Love American Style. It's stuff like that. Uh, I think he was on Love American Style for a little bit, but you'll know, mostly know Ronnie Shell also from, uh, Gomer Pyle, UMC, USMC. So, anyway, for the kids, <laughs> if there are anybody, is there anybody under 40 watching this, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, it starts out with Mr. Brown, played by Ronnie Shell. Mr. Brown hoarding a dozen kids, honestly, who might be anywhere from 9 to 14, I guess. I don't know when you age out of the Mouseketeers. I, I knew the, the Annette Funicello area, era better than this. Maybe I saw this when it was on TV back when I was a kid. I have no idea. It was not special back then. <laughs> it was... 
Annette, Annette Funicello era uh, with, you know, it was all black and white and M-I-C-K-E-Y, all that stuff. These kids are singing, like, dancing to disco tunes. And it's, it's the Mouseketeers of the next generation to me. <laughs> I'm not really familiar with it at all. With it at all. Uh, so anyway, Joanne Worley is following along with this group. She decides to embed herself with the Mouseketeers in order, like, it's like she's going to, like, to a war-torn country or something, um, and she's trying to get the dirt on whether the kids in the Mouseketeers like each other and whether they get along all the time. And if they don't, well, this is the biggest story ever. No, 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 it's not. It's it's not the biggest story. You, you run in very small circles or very unimportant circles. <laughs> it's, it's like Weekly World News wouldn't even take this story. It'd be like, Okay, 12-year-olds don't get together. Big surprise. Okay, so anyway. Uh, the ki- it just shows the kids arriving in Disney World by monorail, and they're singing a song from a movie that Disney Plus will never put in its service. They're singing zippity doo on the monorail from Song of the South. <laughs> and, yeah. And somehow... Uh, Mr. Brown's used to this, I guess. It, it's not driving him crazy. But the kids are in a good mood. Uh, they show up. Some of the girls like to play tennis, apparently. Um, I don't know. They, 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 and they mess around. They're kids, so they mess around, and they pull pranks on each other, and then they get angry at each other, and they fight. They have two emotions. It's, you're a jerk, or we're the best of friends. It's, that's about it. <laughs> they don't waver anywhere in between, uh, except for one girl who just sort of helps Mr. Brown trick them into liking each other again by, pretend, by pretending to be sick. I, I don't know. It's there's a lot of contrivances in 56 minutes, and and to be clear, it's probably more like 46 minutes because again, the commercials are in this. Uh, so anyway, it, 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 I'm not spoiling anything in this thing. There's no real story. Um, the kids have got to get on that stage, according to the boss, who just shows up at Fort Wilderness when they attempt to start camping. Even though they've been had a hotel room, now they're at Fort Wilderness for some reason. You'd think the Mouseketeers would get like the high-level hotel experience, which it seemed like they did first when they checked in, and now they're camping. I don't know. But the boss, in a full suit, just starts walking through their campground and going, you better get these kids on stage tomorrow. And like, like, I don't know, like they screwed up all the time anyway. Like they're losers. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, by the way, this is also a musical, so it's, they do, it's not musical. They sing songs. Like I said, they, they do zippity doo da. They do, um... Whistle While You Work, While They Sit at the Campsite, from Snow White. Uh, while they're sitting around the campfire, one of the girls sings, named Lisa, played by Lisa Welchel. Very young Lisa Welchel, before she was on Facts of Life. Again, a fact only old people know, so, or care about. <laughs> so you got, you got them singing around the campfire, um, and, okay. When they go to Fort Wilderness, in order to create some sort of story and conflict, um, the, one of the little there's two little girls that might be like nine, ten. I have no idea, but the, one of the girls is given the job. She has nothing to do because all the kids were sitting up tents. They're like, "Hey, why don't you secure this rope to something solid?" That's what Mr. Brown says. Secure it to something solid so that you know the tents stay stable. She attaches it to a camper. And guess what? For some reason, at about the time they decide to go to bed and get in their tents, those campers decide to leave. And their tents are dragged away into the night by a guy just going down the highway. He's probably zipping up the four uh, in, in Orlando with, like, tents dragging behind him. And the kids, like I said before, they go from the best of friends who just had a great night around the campfire to, you're the dumbest person in the world and I hate you, to this little, tiny, big brown-eyed girl 
who just cries her eyes out as they verbally abuse her. And, you know, Mr. Brown is like, hey, let's just camp out under the stars. It's only, you know, Florida where it's, yeah, sure, we don't want to get bitten by mosquitoes, but it's probably still 87 degrees out at 10 o'clock at night. So <laughs> you're not going to get cold. Okay. Yes, you're you're on a swamp, but still. Okay. Anyway, this girl then runs away, of course, because she's nine and she's at Disney World, and somehow, this involves her getting into the park, and I guess she ends up near the castle, and falls asleep, holding a Winnie the Pooh plush, and then she dreams about. Winnie the Pooh, like a, one of the characters that dance around the park, you know, the meet and greet kind of characters, she she meets him in her dream, and then they then all of her friends join in a song about the Pooh polka. It's not Pennsylvania, it's not Liechtenstein, it's the Pooh polka, and so they all in their lederhosen dancing, kicking, singing the Pooh Polka with Pooh around and everybody's happy. And of course she wakes up to find the real Pooh character staring her in the face. She's not disturbed by this at all. And then she just, you know, oh, hey, look, I have a friend. And as her friend, her real friends, the Mouseketeers, are hunting for her all over the park, how did she get in by her... Ah, she had a pass. Never mind. She... <laughs> As they, they, she hears them calling for her and she's like don't tell them where I am and she just runs off and when the kids come up to Pooh Pooh's got her back he, he has no idea what they're, they're talking about Pooh it's a nine year old girl who's lost and she's run away help her okay it's just bizarre anyway they, they all come together in the end and they do a big song in front of the castle the end that's that's the show. <laughs> there's like again, there's no real story. Um, kids are playing pinball. Uh, there's a song about the river. Uh, what was the? They sing a song about the river wilderness thing. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. What the the river. There's a river thing in Disney World in the '70s. I don't know if it's still there. And it's just repeated over and over for what seems like five minutes. Same footage also. They, they could have cut the song down by at least four minutes. And we would have gotten the point. Anyway, it's a very barely scripted show. And <laughs> the highlight of it is the commercials. That's about it. It's, uh, let, me, let me make sure I didn't miss anything else. I will tell you what some of the commercials, just to tease you. Uh, what they might, what you might see, shake and bake, uh, Gaines Burgers dog food. I think it's Gaines Burgers. Uh, uh, Tonka trucks, meow mix, uh, Canon cameras, Litton microwaves, a gigantic microwave, Coca Cola, Coke adds life. That's the the campaign in 1977. Coke adds life. Um, Pillsbury Plus. It's moist because there's pudding in the mix. Um, <laughs> The Shell Answer Man, if you got stuck in the snow, don't run the car more than 10 minutes every hour and keep the door window cracked so you can breathe, I guess, um, even though it's freezing cold and your car is stuck in the snow. <laughs> there is also the Reach Toothbrush, um, Chevy Diesel Trucks, right about the time of the big gas shortage. They're advertising diesel trucks because all the other gas apparently is running out. Um, and there's previews for upcoming episodes of Wonderful World of Disney, Run Cougar Run, and what we saw a few weeks ago, The Adventures of Bull Gri Bullwhip Griffin. So, yeah, this is, there's a lot going on in this. It, it's, an, it's an unremarkable uh, story, but for nostalgia's purposes, this is awesome. This is just amazing. I, I I highly recommend if you wanted if you're missing the parks and realize that those of you in Florida aren't missing the parks because your park isn't closed. If you're in LA and Anaheim, 
Disneyland's still closed at this point of me recording this. If you miss seeing the parks and seeing people in them and not being socially distant or wearing masks, uh, this might be for you. It's a nice little flashback. And uh, you get the kids' ride. Of course, they advertise some of the rides, the, the sky thing and uh, a Space Mountain. They don't do a lot of the rides, but they mention a lot. Of tea, they mention teacups and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a uh, surprisingly. Oh, they do uh, uh, Utopia. I think it, I don't know if it's called Utopia in Disney World, but the driving the car is there too. So, yeah. Oh, 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 oh! I can't forget this. When the kids are hunting for the little girl, I even forget her name. Apparently, in 1977, you can commandeer a speedboat, no matter what age you are. If you're nine, ten, like this little girl, it's a two-seater speedboat and go out in the open water. Yes, it's Disney World and all the parks are swamp, you know, surrounded by swampy water everywhere. They didn't stunt double this at all. You're like, well, you know, they must have gotten a, a, a small adult to play her part as she's taking off in a speedboat and being chased by other kids in speedboats. I'm not kidding when I say speedboat. <laughs> This little girl, you, there's a great shot. The camera's following her, and she's making this hard turn, and she's heading right for the beach, and she beaches it, and she hops right out, and it's that girl. There is no switcheroo. There's no stuntman. Children can get speedboats in 1977. That is going to be my personal slogan for the year. Children can get speedboats in 1977. What is wrong with 2020? We screwed up. That's why. Anyway, that's all I can say about that. It's, I got to end it on speedboats. This is great propaganda, by the way, so watch it. Next chance you get, watch it right now. Let's pick tomorrow's episode. 209. 209. <clears throat> ah. I'm not sure. I think this might be a sports movie. It's a movie. Um, I think it might be basketball. I'm not sure. It sounds familiar, but I could be completely wrong. It might be a war movie. I have no idea. Um, Glory Road. Glory Road. So that's what we're watching. Glory Road on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye. There won't be speedboats in this one, I'm pretty sure.